Welcome back. Our first stop this episode is the cutest little town called Proston, a few hours inland off the east coast. Alright guys, this is how you kill a chainsaw. Really? <laughs> you can't do it straight. No, you can't do it straight one side. You have to do it on like the other side as well to where you're cutting. What are you didn't tell me. Ignore what I said. What did you say? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing exactly as you told me. Don't do it on an angle. I never said that. I said you don't do it like this. No. I said don't cut it straight through. I said don't cut it straight through. Well, you cut a little bit to one side and then you go like under to where it was cut. <laughs> no, I've just watched it too many times. Watch someone cut trees. I am a jack. As the sun drops for another day, we get ready to hit the hay after a few tunes from the local talent, the Dovetails. What a treat to wake up to horses at your bedroom window. We've never had much experience with horses, so this stay was super fun. Even Bluey, our border collie, loved the extra company. This morning, after giving the horses some brekkie, we saddled up and gave the kids their first ever horse ride. A magical day ahead tomorrow, a ride in a 100 year old sulky pulled by an ex racehorse named Walter. <laughs> the brown horse called Jimmy was a hit with the kids. He's very cheeky and followed them everywhere. There's a better life there. Take my word. <laughs> This has been one of our most memorable experiences, riding into the sunset and spending quality time with family we hadn't seen in a long time. It's not long before we are hooked up and heading just a few k's up the road to Bindu Madame. Holy dooly. <laughs> Have a look at this place. This is like the jackpot of spots. Give me a second. Check out this spot. Right on the water. I'm going to put the boat in. Yoo-hoo! He's cranky because it's school term now and they're not allowed to have their iPads during school term. They have to do their schoolwork. Yeah, but you said after we're done school work, we're like, no, after you, haven't, term. you haven't finished yet. I have finished school work. Well, I have finished school. Hey, look at this. I'll flick the camera around. This is our view right now. Look at that. Out our window. It's lovely. 
the boat off, ready to go. Do you think we should put the drone up though? Yeah. I'm a bit nervous though for what happened last time. Because if the drone decides to stop walking, work walking. If the drone decides to stop working, <laughs> we're going to be swimming to catch it. Oh my God. What are they? <coughs> Zoe's the animal whisperer. <coughs> I think Dada needs a chair update. Let's just take a sec to admire this cracker of a spot. I swear Zoe has magic powers. <laughs> she just put her head in the water. Look. I caught myself a fish. <laughs> That's how much of a pro I am. She literally just put her hand in the water and picked out a fish. natural habitat needs my space can you believe this place water like glass the most amazing sunset and apparently the dam is an award-winning angler location we take the tinny for a run first thing tomorrow so let's see how we go but first check out this sunset We don't have the clearest weather this morning, so it's off on a little adventure on foot instead. We venture over to the dam wall and, and learn a little bit about its history. Yeah, I wanna say we're going boating. Moon Doom at Dam. Hi. So I don't know what sense of all this one. We get a clear opportunity to duck out and check out the crab pots. Cross your fingers, guys. Nothing. Have a look at this, an old hut on the other side of the dam. We pull up for a quick look before the rain hits. Adventure. We're going out to check the crab pods. Hopefully we've got some red claw and some yabbies. Eee. Bit of a change in weather this morning. It's mighty chilly, but we've been keen to head out and throw in a few lines. But as always, got to get the bait. We taught the kids a really valuable lesson yesterday in boat safety. We did our very first boat rescue of an elderly couple. We were sitting out the front of a caravan and we could see like way over on the other side of the dam what looked to be a hull and then we could hear somebody yelling out cooey you could just see like this little speck and Prima's like I think it's a hull I think it's a hull so we jumped in the boat Prima and I we left the kids in the van and got out there and sure enough it was an elderly couple that had tipped their boat they had a dog in it and the dog jumped out and they both leaned over to get the, the dog and they've the boat he had a heart condition and he wasn't in a good state at all really short of breath he couldn't get out of the water it wasn't it wasn't good so I stayed on the the other side with them and Prima raced back to raise the alarm to get help uh, he came back over and we got we got the elderly gentleman in the boat back to, to this side of the, the dam while we waited for the ambulance to arrive we had to get all of his gear it's freezing here so he was he was absolutely frozen got him warmed up got him out of his wet stuff he was just blue he was just he was so so exhausted they're very lucky both of them she had a, a really badly banged up leg pretty gruesome the ambulance were pretty good they arrived in about 30 minutes but for the kids it was really important important lesson that you know you got to obviously have the right gear on board the right safety gear the kids sometimes all hang over the side of the boat when they see something exciting so it was really good to say you know like if, if you do hang over the all hang over the boat on the same side it can lead to disaster the boat can tip if we're all on the one side I'm telling everyone about yesterday's ordeal 
some good news for them. <laughs> we went and got their, got their crab pots this morning and they've got two big red claw in them. So we've delivered them back safe and sound. So they're quite happy they at least get their crab pots back. Yeah, over there, it's like just a speck. So it's really hard to see. Anyway, that's our rescue story. I hope we don't have too many of them. But good news is they're okay. I'm bummed to tell you this, but we caught absolutely nothing out here. Three days and nothing. So here's another wicked sunset vid instead. On the road again. Nah, I'm not singing. <laughs> Just a short drive today up the highway to Cania Gorge. For a bushwalk, check it out. Kenya Gorge National Park has got to be added to your must visit list. There's heaps of different walks and hikes in the area to suit every adventurer. The rocks, caves, cliffs, and of course the views really are stunning in this part of the country. The tracks in the National Park range from a few hundred metres past the car park to over 20 kilometres long. For our crew of little legs, the mid-range tracks were plenty long enough. We spent a few hours in here just repeating the words, wow. There's a few van parks minutes from here, so you really could space out your day trips to really soak up this jaw-dropping area. Some of the tracks definitely get your heart rate up, but don't worry, there's plenty of spots to sit and admire the views. Bloodwood Cave was a hit. We even saw a few stinky bats. Since all three kids are homeschooled, places like this make learning a breeze. The kids ended up pretending this whole national park was Jumanji. As I mentioned in a previous episode, everyone adjusts to full-time van life differently. For the youngest two, it was like they've lived this adventurous life forever. We've done a lot of trips over the years, from a trip of Oz in a camper trailer, four runs to the top of Cape York, and adventures here, there, and everywhere. You have to touch that thing four times. But to be back on the road, living the adventure full time, has been the best thing we've done. Zoe, our 14 year old, has taken a little longer to adjust. But she's at the age where she can do more of the activities suited to a teenager. As for Primer and I, we probably miss our mates, Hamish, Simone, Lucy and Chris, and we miss the barbecue nights at home. This lifestyle is an adventure, an ever-changing one, where we really don't know what's coming next. That's it for our stay at Kania. We make a run back to the coast to restock before the adventure takes us west in the next episode. But for now, we've saved the best spot till last. Byfield National Park, just a hop, skip and jump north of Yapoon. We're headed down to a secluded little area called Five Rocks Beach. From the car park to the beach, it was an easy 10-15 minute walk. 100% worth visiting if you're in the area. We had the place to ourselves and loved every minute.
check out this place. If you're paying attention, you'll see five distinct rocks in a line on the water's edge. And you've guessed it, that's why it's called Five Rocks Beach. Like this with my family really does make you stop and see all the little magic moments life has to offer. The day is getting on but we drive around the point to Nine Mile Beach. As a side note you can camp along here but it isn't suitable for vans so load up your swag and get on over here and check this place out. Nice. It is very Fraser Island vibe. What an awesome spot to watch the afternoon go by. Glassy waters, views as far as you can see, and some fun four-wheel driving tracks for the Colorado. For anyone following on in the background, I've got a small update for our brand new Y62 Touring Rig build. It's officially been chopped. I'll be sharing more deeds as the build progresses, but for now, that's just a sneaky little update for you. Our adventure in Byfield National Park is coming to an end, but geez, it's been a wicked day out. We couldn't bring Bluey since doggos aren't allowed, so it's time to head back along the tracks, soak up this gorgeous afternoon and pick up the furball. Remember to click on the subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode. We're heading out back, baby. See you in the next one.